You still remember how far back yours dates back? <laughs> no, before, before he was president, mm -hmm. he was a cabinet member. He was Secretary of Defense. Mm. Of, uh, mm -hmm. That's when I knew him in a more personal interaction mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. Of course, I had seen him here and there, mm -hmm. but we never talked. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, at that time, he was cabinet secretary. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Cory Aquino's. Cory, this is him. Yeah, and I was the chairman of the Development Bank of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So every now and then I would be called upon to. Uh, we were rehabilitating the DBP, mm -hmm. even at cabinet meetings, to just give a briefing of where things stand. Mm -hmm. And that's how I ended up having a little more personal mm -hmm. interaction with him. Mm -hmm. Although he was not a stranger. Uh, to the family, mm -hmm. because it turns out he knew my father, he oh. knew my uncle. Uh, my uncle was the uh, chairman of the Veterans Federation of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And of course, dated back to the guerrilla days. He was <laughs> one of the hunters' guerrillas, oh, okay. <clears throat> together with my father. And uh, even then, he was at that time General Ramos. Mm -hmm. Even mm -hmm. then, he had a very close association mm -hmm. with the veteran community. Yes, yes. That's why even now you can see so him sporting this veteran's cap <laughs> yes. proudly yes. whenever he has the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Impressions, first impressions uh, from these uh, closer interactions during the Cori administration. Well, you know, uh, people have a tendency to think that uh, military men mm -hmm. are um, of a very, you might say, less broad-minded perspective. Mm -hmm. And um, the elite have a tendency to sneer. Mm -hmm. And because um, we had just come from ousting martial law, mm -hmm. the, the connection between military and martial made it uh, seem in many people's minds that uh, <coughs> military were, in a sense, second-class citizens. Mm -hmm. But uh, this was a person who had gone to the Harvard of the military, which mm -hmm. is the West Point. Yeah. His father was a diplomat. Mm -hmm. So your immediate impression is not of a person who's just a military tactician, mm -hmm. but an able administrator, mm -hmm. a wide observer of the global scene, mm -hmm. a very quick learner of very many aspects of uh, uh, public administration, economy, diplomacy, mm -hmm. uh, global <laughs> power balance, mm -hmm. and uh, all the way to the grassroots mm -hmm. because he had fought in the uh, wars of insurgency. He had led soldiers. Mm -hmm. He had, um, as chief of staff of the armed forces, been the administrator of one of the largest um, pieces of administration mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in the entire government. Mm -hmm. So he, he came <coughs> across mm -hmm. as, um, uh, as a leader mm -hmm. and, as a, and as a person who had very wide perspective. Mm -hmm. So it was a mistake actually to put him in that box, which was the general Let's, perception. Let me say that, that uh, uh, it's, it's the fault of uh, putting the military as a whole mm -hmm. in the minds of some people in some kind of a generalization. Mm -hmm. And uh, therefore anybody uh, who was from there would be typecast. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then they begin to forget mm -hmm. that uh, you know this, this, this uh, particular military person mm -hmm. was uh, above the crowd. Mm -hmm. And yet, fairly, fairly. Now, what broad. what also what 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 also um, distinguished him, even in the minds of those that that may be wary of the military, was that at that time he was looked at as among the Edsa Revolution leaders. You know, his famous jump, the fact that uh, he and um, 
uh, and Rile mm -hmm. were among those that were camped out in Camp Aguinaldo at a time when when all this was taking place. Mm -hmm. So he was uh, <coughs> uh, he he was an Ed's uh, revolution hero in a sense, mm -hmm. even though uh, still, if they were looking, if 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 some people were thinking in terms of ranking in their minds, they would still put the the more of or should I say, obvious civilian leaders mm -hmm. before they would think in terms of the military. The military. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was a rising star. Ah, uh, definitely. Huh? Um, but at that time, he wasn't being thought of as a rising star to the presidency. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you that. Uh, at, at least from from the circles I was listening to, mm -hmm. uh, he was not a politician. We had never had a military man mm -hmm. as uh, president, so in their minds, well, he did his thing, and we're very thankful that he did his thing, in spite of the fact that he's a cousin of the person that was ousted, and so mm -hmm. forth and so on. He did a, he did the principal stand, and that, but that's about it. No, mm -hmm. you uh, put him in that <clears throat> box, mm -hmm. and uh, they weren't thinking in terms of. Uh, of him as president, mm -hmm. they were instead, of course, looking at the usual uh, military, uh, I mean, political names, the usual suspects, uh, the usual suspects. <laughs> and uh, as a result, <coughs> uh, for quite a period of time, uh, he he wasn't thought along those lines. Uh, but it evolved mm. over time. Did you did you think? Did you imagine that? Yes, I did. If that that he was he's yes, probably the uh, right guy for the job. Yes, I did. I guess it's partly because in my own career in mm -hmm. the public service, I had served with many people in the military. So I didn't have a knee jerk anti military bias. Mm -hmm. My first uh, work in the public sector was being one of those few that was tasked to put up the rural electrification program of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. And the people that were working closely with me, or maybe the other way, since I was a kid, I was in my 20s, the, the people uh, whom I was reporting to, in a sense, were military men. Mm -hmm. This was, at the time, Colonel <coughs> uh, Pedro Dumol, mm -hmm. and at the time, Colonel mm -hmm. Gregorio Vigilar, <laughs> who was also a West Pointer. Yeah. And the two of them not only impressed me, but uh, they were the people that gave me a better idea of how to connect planning and implementation. Because uh, when you're in the military, it turns mm -hmm. out, you have to think in absolute detail. You, you just don't come up with uh, concepts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, the, and the problem with many who, who uh, in this country is that we're very good at conceptualizing, we're very good at planning, we're very good at talking, but when it comes down to the detail of implementation, we're not quite as good. Now, um, so I, I, I felt even then that, uh, yes, uh, I, I had no bias against the military. I had been taught, in a sense, by uh, association mm -hmm. with military people, mm -hmm. the difference between planning and, and implementation. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, was a, <coughs> he was a man mm -hmm. who came from, in a sense, the same kind of background. Mm -hmm. He had been the head of a large uh, administrative uh, apparatus. Mm -hmm. And you can't do that by just being a concept uh, person right. and just talking of planning. Mm -hmm. He had he had been in foxholes. He, he had he he was dodging bullets, right. and when when your life is on the line, you know, you're not you, you're not thinking of uh, of uh, anything but realities. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, huh, why not? No, mm -hmm. um, we probably need somebody with uh, that that kind of uh, mindset, mm -hmm. uh, experience, mm -hmm. and. Uh, because at that time, the government was racked by uh, coup after coup. Right. I felt maybe you also needed somebody who can command mm -hmm. the respect mm -hmm. of the military. Mm -hmm. Did you see any indications that he was 
had plans or was preparing for? Not immediately. Mm -hmm. uh, probably it, <coughs> it, it became a little more apparent um, after the halfway point of, uh, of Corey's term, mm. uh, when uh, he was also seen as among those that uh, were, in a sense, moderating the, you might say, uh, excess energy <laughs> of the military that were uh, uh, heading coup d'etats and so forth. Mm -hmm. You know, you had people like Honasan, who, who was an acolyte mm -hmm. of uh, Enrile, mm -hmm. but because of the moderating authority mm -hmm. of uh, a military Edsa hero like Ramos, people were beginning to see that uh, he, he was a person that uh, commanded their respect enough mm -hmm. that uh, he didn't have to use weaponry to get them to calm down, mm -hmm. but he, he used his association, mm -hmm. his, his authority, and the recognition of the other side mm -hmm. that this was not a, a, a person that was a desk general. He had actually fought uh, in, in, in wars, mm -hmm. uh, shoulder to shoulder with them. Mm -hmm. So I think that um, that, was, that was becoming more uh, and more plain. Mm -hmm. Of course, it also helped that many of those that were being thought of uh, for succeeding Cory mm -hmm. were beginning to show signs of uh, reverting to traditional politics. Mm. And um, there were many people that thought that, what did we go into a change of government for, which is supposed to have ushered in and a turning point in our history, mm -hmm. if the turning point means simply an about face <laughs> towards the same old, uh, same old, same old. Mm -hmm. huh? Same old order. Uh, so mm -hmm. they began to develop mm -hmm. a feeling mm -hmm. that, interestingly enough, reached even the levels of the elite that, uh, that used to look at the uh, military mm -hmm. uh, as uh, um, not worthy of consideration. Mm -hmm. But they, be they began to look at it along those lines. They began to, s to see his background, uh, his qualities, and, uh, and, the, and the fact that if you were looking for a non-politician leader that could introduce this uh, uh, sense of uh, Combina com combination planning, implementation, plus uh, uh, authority mm -hmm. over the restless military, then he might be he might be well worth considering, mm -hmm. and that's how it began to build up. And I think he began to see uh, that it might work. Mm -hmm. So he, he himself, in a sense, began to encourage the idea. <laughs> When did it <coughs> crystallize in you that this guy's the fellow? When? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, I was, well, I don't mean to brag, but I was probably one of those that you would, that, that would want to believe that I was an orig. <laughs> uh, partly because I didn't like the others uh, <laughs> and thought that, uh, you know, the term trapo. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking, what? Do you, we, we went through that revolution. Mm -hmm. We, we, put, we installed a different kind of leader in Cori, and then we're going to follow that up mm -hmm. with a, you know, going back. Mm -hmm. and, and so even, even in the early days when he was beginning to himself um, open mm -hmm. the idea, mm -hmm. uh, I, I started to move towards, I started to lean towards that uh, that idea myself, mm -hmm. and would say so to friends and so forth, oh. and uh, did uh, in in some few encounters with him say that uh, I would be more than happy mm -hmm. uh, to help out if he decides to be serious about it, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, since. Um, the perception was that he may have many qualities of leadership, but 
he may not be uh, the economic expert that uh, some some people may think is a is a gap in his arsenal. And I thought, well, you know, I, I, I can lend my whatever I, I, I feel like I can bring to the picture. Mm -hmm. So uh, even then, uh, so he began to, mm -hmm. to warm up to me, so to speak, mm -hmm. and uh, eventually um, did uh, take up the, the <laughs> offer. Did you need to convince him that hard or? Not really, because he knew my family. Mm -hmm. And uh, by that time, I had uh, I, I had a record mm -hmm. of uh, of achievement in mm -hmm. in my own field, mm -hmm. because uh, even at, even when I was doing rural electrification, I was I was in my twenties. Mm -hmm. By that time, I had uh, the reputation of having been the youngest administrator of a national program mm -hmm. in post-war history. I had been awarded a TOYM. Mm -hmm. Then I had gone to the World Bank, so, yes. I, have, so I have this uh, global perspective. And my return to the Philippines was occasioned by the request of people around President Corey, who, who uh, uh, suggested that I might want to come and help in the restoration of the economy. Mm -hmm. That's how I ended up doing this dual thing at that time of straightening out the electrification program mm -hmm and helping to reform the Development yeah. Bank of the Philippines. Mm -hmm. So I, I had this reputation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so you became officially part of the uh, campaign team? Uh, f at, first, <laughs> at, at first, not, there was no campaign team yet, mm -hmm. uh, well, because he was, he, was, he, was, <laughs> he was still thinking you know, whether he'd really do it or not. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the m more memorable things for me is uh, when uh, he came to my rental house, I was I was uh, co-renting a house mm -hmm. with my in-laws because I, I at first I thought I wasn't going to stay, stay in the country that long. I had to, I was on leave from the World Bank, yes. but since I had made the offer to help him out <laughs> plan some e economic strategy for his platform if he decides to run, mm -hmm. and he took it he took it up, mm -hmm. he actually came to my rental house. Uh, by himself in a very humble looking car and the only one with him was Balung uh, okay. and uh, he brought he, he was carrying a bunch of papers with him mm -hmm. um, and we sat at the dining table and uh, and started and started chatting about what might be the directions of the economy that he might want to propound mm -hmm. If and when he decides to run, mm -hmm. that's why um, that's why I was saying earlier that um, I, I'd, I'd like to think that I'm an orig <laughs> because he hadn't even started, he hadn't even announced. He was already being talked about, mm -hmm. but he hadn't announced yet, and there wasn't a formal team, mm -hmm. uh, and so forth and so on. But that also spoke about the man. Uh, uh, it's he yeah. It's the planning for. Well, not, he, he wanted to be. Well, not only that. Huh? For not, not only that. Uh, the humility. I mean, he comes all by himself. The humility uh, to 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 listen. Um, the the professionalism mm -hmm. of uh, looking into into detail as mm -hmm. to what and the acceptance that uh, he was a learner. And, and not just, uh, he wasn't coming across like a know-it-all, mm -hmm. you know, that I can solve all the country's problems and so forth, and, so, and that's my destiny, blah, blah. No, he, he, he wanted to help, mm -hmm. but he wanted to be on surer footing mm -hmm. in terms of uh, what, what help he can provide. Mm -hmm. Did that convince you? Of course, because uh, immediately you're looking at a person who's, who's, an, who's a non-politician. Mm -hmm and um, who was open to ideas mm -hmm. and uh, had, um, uh, had the country's welfare in mind mm -hmm. and knew what the country and its citizens needed from the grassroots mm -hmm. because he had, he had been assigned mm -hmm. to all sorts of levels in the military mm -hmm all sorts of places in the country mm -hmm. that allowed him to see in detail what the Philippines really is all about. Mm -hmm.
he eventually decides. He comes out in yeah, he eventually decided, and at because that he point. the LDP. Pardon? If you remember, he joins the LDP. Yes, of course. Uh, and he, he contested the nomination with of the, the party Speaker uh, with Speaker Mitra, who was uh, the leading uh, political favorite of the party, mm -hmm. and eventually got the nomination. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, at that the time, we were, uh, we, we were already on his side, so to speak. We were, yes. part, of the, we were part of a new, uh, newly formed, in a sense, a strategy slash uh, campaign <laughs> team. And we <laughs> felt we were up against pretty serious odds mm -hmm. because none of us were political operatives mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we were up against a person who had, I mean, if you're the Speaker of the House, you, you, you've got the Congress, you've got right. the political right. party and so forth and so on. And um, you even might have the President uh, on your side because mm -hmm. uh, you wouldn't have been Speaker if, if, uh, if, if, if you weren't supported by the president exactly. so it was an uphill it was an uphill battle mm -hmm. and of course uh, initially it, it uh, we, we lost it because yeah. he, he was not the nominee of the party he lost the primary there and we thought that's the end of that uh, yeah. we were we were about to fold our tents anyone else would have mm -hmm. but the rest of us felt that uh, uh, country needs this sort of person. I mean, that was our belief. Of course, you can say that because I can that on you, but, but just looking at the qualities of the person, the, 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 the problems the country was facing, which included having to unite, having to stabilize, having to uh, have a new outlook that was, that was not uh, political, we thought that uh, this is the man of the hour, and he had the background, education, mm -hmm. uh, administrative experience, mm -hmm. which was, to our minds, uh, much more than a person whose, or persons, mm -hmm. whose main background was well, political, Politics. or they had the, um, what should I say, the financial wherewithal mm -hmm. to, to fund their campaign. What was the spirit like in the team? Uh, it wasn't uh, an organized, well-oiled political machinery. Well, there was if no I were just to speak of, if, if, <laughs> if I were to make a comparison, I guess we were like the early Christians because uh, we were we felt like uh, a minority, mm -hmm. but we had a strong belief in a destiny. And we felt that we had we had the, the person that would uh, pull it off, mm -hmm. um, and uh, having having all that in having all that in our minds, it was nevertheless going to be an uphill climb, mm -hmm. and it would require a lot of missionary zeal and conversion of the of the non-believers. <laughs> In, into an idealistic, almost an idealistic frame of mm -hmm. mind mm -hmm. that combined um, new hope with uh, patriotism. <laughs> that was a very nice picture painting there. How did you do it? I mean, <laughs> well, how did we, you we, have the comfort what, of looking what, back uh, at it? Financing, networks, support bases. Well, there, there were a lot of elements that uh, fell into place because, as it turned out, many there were many people, including President Aquino herself. Oh, that was crucial. That was that was the, that, that that did it. Um, who believed that uh, a, a new dawn should be represented by a, a new leader in many respects, mm -hmm. and and uh, then you had. The, Raul Maglapus, who was, who was still around, we didn't have a party, you see. Mm -hmm. So LDP already had Mitra. Mm -hmm. And for uh, President Ramos to run, he had to run with a party. Mm -hmm. But the law doesn't allow you to suddenly come up with a party mm -hmm. and off, off you go. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, there was an existing party mm -hmm. led by Raul Maglapus. Right. 
This was the Lacasse and you, and it was NUCD. Yeah. We we attached the Lacasse and all that later on, but mm -hmm. it was NUCD. Mm -hmm. And uh, Manglapos, of course, was is known in, in in the history of his career uh, as being a Don Quixote, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he he would present himself as president, even though he didn't have the. Like I thought I put that on side. I'm sorry. Even though many people would think. He didn't have the so-called common touch, even though he, everybody acknowledged his brilliance. Mm -hmm. But but his uh, Don Quixote frame of mind mm -hmm. is what made him mm -hmm. go for it and yeah. offer and offer the NUCD. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, when when even Corey uh, got into the picture, there you are. Mm -hmm. We we had the beginnings of what could what ultimately became a success, mm -hmm. even though it, it was an uphill climb all the way. All throughout, mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe. There were so many candidates, as, as you recall. There were about six. Huh? Which meant that uh, you'd, you'd have to carve out your, your, your mm -hmm. niche mm -hmm. and hope mm -hmm. that that niche you carve out mm -hmm. is, is a majority enough mm -hmm. uh, to, to win the day. Mm -hmm. FBR and Joel actually spoke of Oil spots. I'm not sure if you if you came across. No, that, I don't uh, remember that. You know, oil spots all over the country. Yeah, but definitely and it was. And eventually they just they it, just met up and became. Yeah, I call it I call it niche. Mm -hmm. It's probably the same thing, mm -hmm. but um, the idea uh, with six candidates uh, and somebody representing the majority party. It really, I guess, had to be a strategy. It's mm -hmm. almost a guerrilla strategy, of um, well, identifying, <laughs> yeah, of identifying with with precision uh, your target markets, mm -hmm. and then and then hoping that all those markets combined mm -hmm. would give you the edge. Mm -hmm. And of course, as things turned out, that's what happened. Mm -hmm. But you know, there was Miriam, and there was Mitra, mm -hmm. and the and ding. then there was the ding. I mean, these were Imelda. Uh, there was Imelda. Yeah, there were so many candidates, mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, maybe it something. was it was fortuitous that there were many candidates because that that divided mm -hmm. <coughs> the market uh, even more, mm -hmm. and and so everybody was niching, and um, as it turned out, uh, we 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 ended up with, and maybe the other thing is. Uh, it's possible that others miscalculated uh, his ability to get to, to win. Yeah. And so they were much more interested in targeting each other so, yeah. mm -hmm. and um, saying nasty things about each other. Mm -hmm. And there was very little you could say nasty about Ramos. Aside from, oh, you know, my politician, and oh, mm -hmm. and stuff mm -hmm. like this, which which uh, can only go so far, mm -hmm. uh, but if you start saying that somebody is corrupt, is mm -hmm. honest, hidden wealth, ah, me, me no? mm -hmm. and, and that's what they were charging. Yeah. <laughs> that's what well, they were they charging each yeah. other with, and yeah. and uh, so mm -hmm. uh, Ramos wasn't only clean. Mm -hmm. Under those circumstances, mm -hmm. he stands out. Mm -hmm. And they missed his trajectory. Mm -hmm. he eventually. It was just a plurality, you know? Yeah, it was 30 percent something percent of the vote. <laughs> it was probably the smallest plurality, but uh, it, it made history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where was the economy? In Where the were doldrums. We were, the, we, were, the we were known as the doormat of Asia, which was sad because we had been the second uh, leading economy. At a, at a certain point in time, um, the ouster of uh, the martial law regime did not produce instant results. Mm -hmm. uh, and in fact, there was a period of uh, um, instability mm -hmm. brought about by coups, coups, but at the same time, looking back, brought about perhaps by, um, by a lower focus on economic strategy than on the political structure. So everybody was uh, cheering the return of democracy, but they 
but the, they were not focusing mm -hmm. on bringing that democracy to the benefit of the greater majority. Mm -hmm. So you had brownouts, mm -hmm. partly because we decided to politicize the nuclear power plant, yeah. and therefore had a 600 megawatt gap, which we couldn't fill mm -hmm. instantly. And so unfortunately, f that resulted in a period of time yeah. uh, where, where this economy was thinking deeper because it was very hard to convince foreign investors to come to a country with, with, with a power sector that was totally mm -hmm. unreliable mm -hmm. for, for doing business. So as a result, we were still having positive gains in terms of uh, clawing back from the depths of, uh, of debt, uh, as, as evidenced by continuous discussions with the IMF mm -hmm. and the Paris Club and so forth. Uh, we did have some very uh, good economic uh, leaders like Jimmy Ong Pin mm -hmm. and Jobo Fernandez. Uh, Ting Jaime, mm -hmm. but uh, their efforts were not complemented by uh, by uh, uh, infrastructure mm -hmm. build up mm -hmm. and things that were mm -hmm. necessary to have the framework, mm -hmm. or you might say the launching pad. Mm -hmm. So when we came in. Mm -hmm. Uh, the plus was democracy was restored. Mm -hmm. The second plus was that because it was Ramos, the, the military were kind of uh, calmer, mm -hmm. or at least they weren't thinking of uh, more coups. <laughs> and um, uh, to his credit, President Ramos focused on the economy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. First order of the day then? Well, the first order of the day was to stop the brownouts, <coughs> Be because uh, if that continued, then nothing you said in, in, in the international community would be convincing. Mm -hmm. And he did it by way of a very innovative approach of having the private sector become investors okay. in infrastructure, which up to that time, worldwide and up to today, mm -hmm. is generally the responsibility of government, of government yeah. which it should be because I mean what do you pay taxes for mm -hmm. uh, the the two big responsibilities of government are national security and infrastructure mm -hmm. that's why you pay taxes so that the government can use it to build that but mm -hmm. but our coffers were dry mm -hmm. and looking ahead mm -hmm. we were playing catch up yeah. with a moving target because the rest of Asia was was tiger economies mm -hmm. and here we are mm -hmm. We are way, way behind mm -hmm. and with no ammunition. Mm -hmm. how, how could you possibly win that? Mm -hmm. So we had to look for the ammunition elsewhere, mm -hmm. and that's when we devised this program of bringing in the private sector yeah. as investors even in infrastructure. Mm -hmm. It became the model of yeah. private sector infrastructure in the whole world. Most everyone followed that. Model. And um, a, a big part of the President Ramos' international reputation had to do with that. Mm -hmm. And um, he followed it up during the APEC meetings. The, first, the second APEC meeting was held in the Philippines. Okay? It was the second of the APEC series, I think. But it was the first also to be held in the Philippines. And... Uh, These were the ministerials, I think? No, this was leaders' meeting. Oh, leaders. 96. 96. Mm -hmm. And no, it might, might have been before, because the, the 96 one ended up with, a, with the econ Asian economic crisis. This was early on. It might have been 94, 95, thereabouts. 93 was Blake Island. In any case, uh, what the president did at that time was ask the open question to members of the cabinet. Okay, we're going to be the hosts. What are we going to put on the table mm -hmm. that will be a unique global contribution of the Philippines? Uh, in other words, you don't want to be just a host. Mm -hmm. 
and show them how nicely we dance and how hospitable we are and all the sort of stuff. That was being visionary. Yeah, and um, that was the birth, thanks to his leadership, of what and eventually became known as the APEC Private Advisory Council. It was his idea mm -hmm. to get the private sector involved in APEC which, bef which until that time was looked at as a governmental, public sector mm -hmm. type of a uh, of an organization. Mm -hmm. So he became he 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 catapulted mm -hmm. in a sense from from being a local leader mm -hmm. to an international one, because he had introduced an idea mm -hmm. which people had not thought of before, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which was groundbreaking, mm -hmm. which was a global example, mm -hmm. and which could be emulated mm -hmm. by countries all around the world that mm -hmm. may be facing the same problems that we had mm -hmm. of trying to play catch up and having the public coffers relatively dry. Mm -hmm. That was one significant transition, leader of Asia's doormat to a regional voice. Yes, at the very least. and you know he also subtly uh, introduced a more balanced foreign policy. Mm -hmm. uh, what do I mean by that? Well, the very first trips he undertook after he became president mm -hmm. were in ASEAN, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thailand. Yeah. You know, so he was promo he even became an ASEAN promoter. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so he w he was evolving mm -hmm. into a regional leader mm -hmm. and not just a national one mm -hmm. and introducing concepts that rallied mm -hmm. other leaders so that at the end of it all he became recognized worldwide mm -hmm. as a leader's leader. Mm -hmm. And uh, but what do I mean by more uh, balance? Well, as you know, every time a president is elected in the Philippines, everybody's wondering when he, uh, when, the, when the new president is going to travel to the United States and address the joint houses of Congress, and that would be the high point of, uh, of, of, of his early presidency. And everybody did that. Mm -hmm. He didn't. What he did was travel first to the ASEAN, ASEAN and promote the idea that the ASEAN should get m together much more. Mm -hmm. But he also was promoting the idea that the, that the future of the Philippine economy lay to a large extent on its being able to tap uh, the large ASEAN market mm -hmm. and not just be totally dependent mm -hmm on the West mm -hmm. and Japan, mm -hmm. which was the way the, stru the, Philipp the structure of the... So, mm -hmm. you got infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, being addressed, mm -hmm. uh, the, and then you had the, uh, the, the global investment arena mm -hmm. being expanded. Mm -hmm. And of course, the opportunities for the Philippines to interact mm -hmm. within a much ex much more expanded arena was, uh, you might say, uh, a double-edged mm -hmm. strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, on the one hand, you get your economy going. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, you re-established mm -hmm. the Philippines as a thought leader mm -hmm. in how the region should evolve. Mm -hmm. And that's how Ramos um, evolved from being a military leader to a national leader, mm -hmm. to a regional and global leader. Mm -hmm. And as I said, recognized by others, including Mahathir, mm -hmm. as a leader's leader. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. Let me let me focus that's on that. And how he was, how he would turn a negative into a positive. No infrastructure. Uh, there's lack of funds to, to to address that in the first place. Turns it around. The other side of the coin is it's an opportunity. Well, it's an opportunity mm -hmm. to invest and it's an opportunity to greater 
participation in the Philippine economy. Mm -hmm. And the thing is, the thing is, so uh, many of these ideas were not new. But if you recall what I said earlier, what impressed me about the people I worked with who were in the military was that they knew how to connect plans with implementation. So getting, putting infrastructure ahead. If you read all our five-year plans, they're all there, gathering dust, okay? <laughs> but because he was an implementation-oriented person, mm -hmm. he would always look for the answer to the question, okay, that's a good idea, how do we make it happen? Mm -hmm. That was always it. Uh, well, you know, he was uh, famous for his little scribblings that always said CSW. Oh, okay. <laughs> but CSW is a reflection of a mindset that looks at implementation in its absolute detail. Mm -hmm. You just don't say, let's go build a house. You have to ask, okay, where are you going to put it? Who's going to supply the cement? Who are you, who's going to supply the, the, the plumbing, the electricity, the furniture, the roof? That sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, that's, that's the mindset that he introduced. So even though many of the programs that were, that were, that were followed were not uh, particularly unknown, mm -hmm. What was remarkable is how it was implemented. He was a non-politician. Mm -hmm. He was more inclined to, to trying to get something done rather than having more and more plans. But the other interesting thing about him that evolved over time is how he was able to get politicians to be part of this team mm -hmm. of moving the entire uh, plan mm -hmm. forward in unison. Mm -hmm. You will recall, of course, that when he was elected, not only that he had 30-something percent, but the, the Congress was not even the majority mm -hmm. in his party. Not at all. Nor was the Senate. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, he had a very uh, um, astute uh, politician in Joe DeVee, who was able to, to, to craft mm -hmm. a uh, coalition. Mm -hmm. But added to that is the fact that the president practically ran his relations with Congress like a parliament. Mm -hmm. So he would make use of what we call the LEDAC, mm -hmm. Legislative Executive Development Advisory Council. Mm -hmm. So all these uh, senators and congressmen, all of whom, of course, have their constituencies, their, their ideas, their egos, <laughs> in the room. Mm -hmm. And we would discuss specific things. And, 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 the, and the question was always, it was always framed in how is this going to benefit the entire country? It was always that. He wasn't looking for how does this provide me a photo op, okay? Mm -hmm. Many leaders after him were more interested in, in the photo you know, a photo op, you know, go, go raid a, a rice warehouse and look like you're solving the rice problem, <laughs> photo op. Not him. So you end up with people committed because they said so mm -hmm. within that room mm -hmm. that they would that they will support this and that mm -hmm. and and as a result everybody goes and implements along the same agreed terms consensus builder consensus builder. Uh, and uh, that is why, um, after him, there were uh, not a few who n remarked that uh, his successors should have used this uh, mechanism a lot more than they did. Yeah. You know, he, which is interesting. Uh, as a military guy, you would have thought that he, he would drift towards dictatorial tendencies mm -hmm. and a command type of uh, management. Mm -hmm. and he didn't. Instead, he used his being a non-politician mm -hmm. to gather the politicians 
who probably would be <laughs> embarrassed to look too political before somebody mm -hmm. who, is, who is just saying, what should we do for the country? What should we do for the country? Mm -hmm. What should we do to advance Philippines 2000? There was a specific hmm, target. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not nebulous. The country is here today. Two thousand is around the corner. Mm -hmm. Everybody is racing uh, uh, ahead of us, and uh, there's no stopping them. Mm -hmm. So if we just say, "Okay, let's move," let's move where? Mm -hmm. In his particular case, he made it specific. Where do we want to find ourselves in the year two thousand? Mm -hmm. If you put it in that context, you 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 can't be nebulous. Mm -hmm. You got to be specific because there's a timeline involved. Mm -hmm. There are projects that you have to think of that have to have a gestation period that makes them happen within that time frame. Mm -hmm. And that set of projects should actually result in the economy mm -hmm. being where you want it to be mm -hmm. by the time that uh, you, you get to that point. Mm -hmm. It's important also that he had governance document you know, as embodied in Philippines 2000. So everything was tied up to it. This yeah. is what we will do, this is how we will no. do it. Yeah. Let me add one more thing. Huh? Aside from Ledak, mm -hmm. uh, that's why he, to some extent he was a fun guy to work with, but also uh, you, you, you better put like 26 hours of your day <laughs> into it. Mm -hmm. Because aside from that, and you, as cabinet members, we of course had to prepare the materials mm -hmm. and, and, and ideas. He was also the most, what should I say, um, avid in terms of coming up with um, public meetings of oh. different sectors to, I think we did it at least twice a year, mm -hmm. to, to look at, yeah, to look at national priorities and programs and f see if we can at, re at least reach uh, some consensus. But what does that do? It makes people involved mm -hmm. in looking for the uh, solution and not just identifying problems endlessly. Mm -hmm. And uh, it mobilizes mm -hmm. sectors and communities towards reaching some kind of uh, modus operandi. Mm -hmm. And it balances contending sectors, uh, you know, so that uh, they, they'll have to look for for some kind of a compromise, let's oh. say the political oh. sector mm -hmm. as against the entire mm -hmm. civil society sector. Common ground. Common ground. Mm -hmm. And uh, then he also was the first one to deliberately bring the government to the countryside. The out-of-town cabinet meetings. So we would have out-of-town <laughs> cabinet meetings. Yeah. And um, our presence, of course, would be felt because the presidential party cannot be ignored. Mm -hmm. And we would be right there. We'd have to, we would have to know what's going on on the ground mm -hmm. in the places we went to so that it was not just that we were going to discuss national problems, but because it had a specific locale, we, we had to also know mm -hmm. what, what, what to what do there. Happening. And he required that, didn't well, he? required well, that. You guys have to go there a day ahead or Oh, yeah, he required yeah. that. So, and I think it, it comes from the fact that his, his military training made him realize or internalize that you cannot talk about where the country is going if you don't understand that the country is made up of different disparate parts which have to be understood clearly for mm -hmm. their differences mm -hmm. as well as their commonalities. Mm -hmm. Chords, he introduced that. You know, the, the, the cabinet. Uh, well, were you assigned? Uh, were you assigned any specific uh, province or no? Not, region not really. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I remember is that there was a time when he was uh, trying to develop sports beyond basketball, mm -hmm. which again was an, an interesting uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. That is not new. We were we since then, of course, we were back to being basketball obsessed. But uh, in a sense, he had heard the mantra over and over again that we, we have sunk in our 
competitive capability in the Olympics from being number two or whatever it is in Asia mm -hmm. to doormat as usual. We're not serious about our training. We're obsessed with basketball. Okay, so he comes up with this program to try to expand the, the Philippines towards sports where we might have a um, more competitive advantage. You don't need height, you need agility and so forth and so on. And uh, so he divided the cabinet into different uh, responsibilities of different aggregations of sports oh. <coughs> and for uh, and, and because he knew that I was a uh, uh, black belt in Taekwondo, mm -hmm. you, you, you were he, mm -hmm. he assigned me mm -hmm. to the so-called combative or was it martial arts sports. That's, that's the one I remember where we in a sense <laughs> had different things so I had to deal with uh, entities that were promoting boxing mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. martial arts and so forth and mm -hmm. so on. But again, it's, it's uh, an insight on his part into an aspect of uh, Philippine national life, life and, and, and uh, mentality, mm -hmm. which combines a, dis a national disappointment in our failure to be a world contender, mm -hmm. an observation in some circles that we have, uh, we, we keep harping on basketball, which requires height, which we don't have. Mm -hmm. And so why not look for glory where your comparative advantage might be? Mm -hmm. A very practical uh, in many ways, not only in terms of the global aspect of it, but in terms of how you pass it on mm -hmm. to the educational system mm -hmm. so that you don't end up with all the schools just promoting basketball. And it was very holistic, you know? Uh, it was holistic. Mind, body. Yes, of course, he, he did uh, also come up with regional aggrupations. Mm -hmm. In fact, all these things about Calabarzon, <laughs> Bimp Iaga, mm -hmm. uh, these were during his time. His creations. Be why did he come up with it? Be because if you wanted to, well, at least for Calabarzon and the other aggrupations, if, if you wanted to have a rational planning uh, of development, you, you can't do it in a piecemeal. Mm -hmm. uh, no progressive country does it on a piecemeal basis. The reason why the United States appears to do it on a piecemeal basis is only because each state of the United States is bigger than 90% of the countries in the world. <laughs> yes. So, of course, they're dealing with a humongous landmass. But here, you have to aggregate and then you have to figure out what is the comparative, but it's like little countries. Mm -hmm. How do you rationalize the infrastructure? How do you address the growing urbanization of the place? And stuff like this, no? Mm -hmm. So, Calabarzon, um, I forgot the other acronyms. Sok Sargen. But, um, Sok <laughs> Sargen, it's, it's almost an adaptation of federalism without changing the entire uh, governmental system. Mm -hmm. So there was a recognition that local governments should probably have a little more say in how they should develop, mm -hmm. but a message as well that local governments should have the foresight to, to uh, decide that they cannot do it on a kanya kanya lang basis mm -hmm. because they're they're contiguous and uh, the development has has to be looked at mm -hmm. in terms of a wider scope. Now, in the, in the case of Bimpe Yaga, the the idea is that uh, peace in Mindanao mm -hmm. cannot be approached just on a political front. Um, it has to be an economic front. Mm -hmm. And you, you expand it to Iyaga because you want to show our brother um, Muslims 
that being Islamic does not mean being a failure mm -hmm. because you're surrounded by Islamic countries that are roaring successes. Mm -hmm. So if you expose yourselves to them, mm -hmm. not only do you have a wider economic zone uh, for your uh, uh, economic endeavors, mm -hmm. but you get to learn. Mm -hmm. So we would send people to Malaysia to learn Islamic banking. So that Islamic banking would not just be a name, mm -hmm. but it looks exactly like all other banking. Mm -hmm. But the exposure would show mm -hmm. that if you followed an economic strategy, it might be your better chance of uplifting mm -hmm. the livelihood of everybody there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that was how it was. Yeah. <coughs> Again, you mentioned that the Bimpiaga transition, exactly the same thing, but from southern back door to southern gateway. So just the change of the term actually makes it all, mm -hmm. you know, acceptable. And, decent, yeah, and, and, I, and I guess it worked because uh, there was, there were no big insurgencies mm -hmm. At, at that time, mm -hmm. since everybody was thinking in terms of how we relate with each other, mm -hmm. but, you know. Mm -hmm. And of course that entire area, historically, uh, they're relatives. It's always been porous. <laughs> <laughs> well, but they related to each other. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. Through, throughout history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, you're in a sense reigniting a, his, a historical uh, tradition. Mm -hmm. Tell me about your economic liberalization and global competitiveness. And let me start off with breaking the cartels, breaking the monopolies. That took a lot of political will, you know? Yes. And on the other hand, it was also creating well, the new laws, the new legislative mm -hmm. framework for it. Um, which, that was, that was interesting, as even if you look at it now in hindsight. Uh, because in hindsight, there would some there would be some that would say that the return of democracy had a second face to it. Of the flip side of the coin mm -hmm. was the return of oligarchy. <laughs> All right. I think he knew that, and uh, he probably also felt that the economic structure of the Philippines being oligarchic would need to be more inclusive mm -hmm. if democracy is to be taken seriously mm -hmm. and brought to the next stage mm -hmm. where you have a growing middle class. Mm -hmm. Because without a growing, educated middle class, you will always have a so social structure mm -hmm. of dependency, mm -hmm. where the very rich are very far in terms of benefits and uh, income mm -hmm. from the very poor, and therefore the very poor are dependent on them. Mm -hmm. And it continues because our political system, built as it is in the image and likeness of the United States, mm -hmm. requires a lot of funding. Mm -hmm. And the money will always come from those that have lots of it. Mm -hmm. And once again, you're back to who's got it. Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> so it, it was interesting that uh, he appeared to sense or, or, or knew this as, a, as an economic fact of life, but had the daring mm. to uh, try to shake the, 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 the tree mm. whose inhabitants included some who were his allies mm -hmm. for the restoration of democracy. So it's, no, it's not a surprise that uh, at the start of it all, there were a lot of uh, people uncomfortable with what he was doing. Uh, there were a lot, I know, personally, mm -hmm. of people in that 
uh, level of society mm-hmm. who uh, reverted to saying that, uh, well, uh, military and so forth, <laughs> and the military approach, uh, Pano is being advised by a military guy like Joe Almonte, who's <laughs> got wild ideas of uh, uh, I don't know what, you know. But he was really addressing a perceived, and not, not only perceived, a studied root cause of why the Philippines has a more difficult time moving forward mm-hmm. and, and why it is necessary to have a situation where more and more of our people will rise to middle income. Um, <clears throat> uh, that, that has many uh, ramifications to it. There would be inclusiveness, there would be higher education levels that would allow people to have smarter choices in terms of uh, the election process. Mm-hmm. It would allow more entrepreneurship mm-hmm. and so forth and so on. So um, it was difficult, it was daring, mm-hmm. but uh, it was tackling one of the root causes. Mm-hmm. Now, to some extent, it's too bad that uh, his term of office was six years, mm-hmm. because my own feeling is that if it had continued a little longer, maybe that whole effort mm-hmm. to um, uh, to force the issue, so to, so to speak, mm-hmm. on growing the middle class mm-hmm. would have been m- much more embedded mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. in the economic structure of the Philippines. Mm-hmm. Now, that, would you mention that I was going to ask that of you as well. Did he have enough time? Obviously not. Well, as you know, and towards the attempts. end of his term, <laughs> there were there were those that wanted him to extend, and uh, even he began to think that perhaps if mm. some kind of a constitutional, and then the people like us, mm. who felt the same way, this, uh, and Peru then and, and not yeah. not only that, but uh, at that point in time, we were the only country. Oh, we, 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 put it another way, we were the least affected Asian economy of the Asian economic crisis, mm-hmm. largely because of the programs that he, mm-hmm. that, that he pushed. Mm-hmm. And the last thing we wanted is, of course, to, to plunge in, into the Asian economic crisis mm-hmm. and, the, and, the, and the choices after him were making a lot of people uneasy. <laughs> and looking back, yeah. there, it looks like there was a good reason for the, <laughs> for, for the uneasiness. Were you supportive of that, the, the, yeah. the Firma People's Initiative? Of course. You, of oh, course okay. I was. Because you wanted Partly to. because um, you felt I, I believed in him. You few years. Uh, so, and and uh, partly because I always thought that uh, Part of the problem of the Philippines is its lack of continuity. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, having just come from an extended martial law, one can argue the other way mm-hmm. that, oh my gosh, and then you'll have the same, da, 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 on and on and on and on. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you look at the Asian economies, most of them were marked by continuity of leadership, mm-hmm. combined, of course with good leadership. Mm-hmm. Marcos's problem was that he was going great guns until he made a left turn. You know? <laughs> if not, he would have been you know, one of the, one of the greats. Yeah. Yeah. In other words, we didn't get that right combination of continuity mm-hmm. and, uh, mm-hmm. and continued enlightened le- leadership. Lee mm-hmm. Kuan Yew mm-hmm. went on and on and on. Uh, Singapore was a one part, has, has, it continues to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, Malaysia, there was only UMNO. Yeah. Uh, on, I mean, I can keep citing mm-hmm. examples. Mm-hmm. So I felt that if you had uh, a combination, at last, of a good leader mm-hmm. 
and a degree of continuity, which doesn't have to be forever, but mm -hmm. at least to a point where you would have established a platform for real takeoff, mm -hmm. that's an opportunity not to be missed. Mm -hmm. So of course I was, I was, I was mm -hmm. for that move. It didn't prosper, but mm -hmm. Young. Some have suggested that he didn't quite plan well for the success. Yeah, I think he uh, he moved a bit later than than some of us would have preferred. Mm -hmm. I guess there was a part of him that was thinking that uh, uh, he he didn't want the maybe the onus of appearing mm -hmm. to, uh, to 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 want to be permanent mm -hmm. and uh, the Philippine tradition and the and and the ouster of uh, a long mm -hmm. martial law regime didn't seem... So he was vacillating. Mm -hmm. And part and as a result of that vacillation, he didn't get what he actually, I think, and many of us mm -hmm. Too late. would Maybe have he should preferred. Have a bit earlier. Yeah. And, uh, and as a result, the succession planning was not as smooth as it might have otherwise been. Mm -hmm. Also, the overwhelming popularity of <laughs> the vice president. Yeah, yeah. well. <laughs> you, you were part of the Senate slate of... Yeah, that was interesting. I, uh, you know, but weren't there... I, I guess that was a reflection of not very good succession planning because there were at least... there were. There, there was, was three a cast factions. There yeah. was a point in John time. Didi, Rene Didi, uh, there was a point in time where he was encouraging what he called new politics, mm -hmm. and uh, it ended up at a certain point in time before people were well, parties had declared their candidates. There was a time when the papers were full of speculation. Mm -hmm about the so-called three deaths, okay, three deaths. which 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 one will the president anoint? Mm -hmm. And it became three deaths because all three of us that were being speculated by the media mm -hmm. had a name that started with De. De. <laughs> there was De Venecia, mm -hmm. there was De Villa, mm -hmm. and there was De Ocampo, mm -hmm. so the three deaths. Mm -hmm. uh, but of course, eventually, Joe De Ville got it. Mm -hmm. um, but at the time, he was talking about new politics and so forth and so on, and that's probably why he pushed my name into into the ring, mm -hmm. even though I said, I'm not a politician. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's an interesting <laughs> part of that history. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just a few other things, uh, Secretary. Bear with me on this. <laughs> oh. You already mentioned the uh, Philippine coming out party was really APEC 96. No? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But tell us about his character. I mean, the, from the perspective of uh, supposedly the man's favorite golfing partner. <laughs> <laughs> he, he loved golf. I mean, it, he, he obviously loved that sport. Mm -hmm. And um, he was famous for jogging, I mean, co co com combining physical fitness like jogging with golf. Mm -hmm. So uh, in those days, he could hit the ball and then start jogging. And, and uh, did you too? <laughs> well, my, it was my good fortune that since I'd been playing golf, uh, even as a teenager, I could out hit them all, right? I'm, and so uh, I could calmly walk while <laughs> others had to jog because maybe they'd have to go as far as where his ball is. <laughs> but every now and then I I do it too. But I was I was fairly fit anyway. I was I was relatively young then. But yeah, he was. Uh, what was he, the he was part into of this. what was? Uh, no, what was the, the part of his character that the public didn't see but you saw. Um, he could combine uh, humor and even golf with uh, serious decision making. We would uh, have golf games in Malacanang Golf Course, 
that start at five o'clock in the morning. But if you think that we're just going to be playing golf, you're wrong. By that, by that time, he would have read all the newspapers. <laughs> and uh, none of us would have read it, but we'd have to be prepared because he'd ask questions. Oh, this thing came in, uh, what, what, yeah? So the, the rest of us knew that he was a workaholic, but a lot of people didn't un know the extent. I mean, he's the only guy I've seen who, uh, among the presidents who actually had a traveling office. Because inside his car, mm -hmm. he had a fax machine, he had a, a, a whole bunch of papers, and then he was forever reading stuff and, mm -hmm. and scribbling stuff. Mm -hmm. But you know, you can get overwhelmed by an excess of information. Uh, his training, though, in the military and intelligence, I think, allowed him to be able to distinguish the priorities that had to be dealt with and to understand that you cannot tackle every problem on earth. You just have to decide mm -hmm. which ones are make or break. Mm -hmm. And that's what he focuses on. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and uh, that is uh, uh, one of the things that uh, people m sensed, but uh, may not have completely known. Mm -hmm. Now, when it came to his humor, oh, okay. <laughs> Interestingly enough, it seemed to have, uh, either he started to uh, make it more and more public as the years went by, or it seemed to have evolved. Mm -hmm. Because I, I, I do remember that during the campaign, a lot of us were worried that he would come across as uh, stiff. stiff yeah. no? And we would put punchlines into some of the speeches that we helped draft and hope that uh, he, he would use the punchline enough to but as years went by, he became a pretty witty guy, mm -hmm. and and he could come up with a, with an extemporaneous speech a lot of the time, which was funny, well structured, mm -hmm. but still quite meaningful. So uh, so that was one of the you you you, you might say the things that uh, people got surprised with over time, mm -hmm. who felt that he was going to be uh, um, stiff. Colorless. Colorless. <laughs> he had a very diverse cabinet. Uh, different personalities. You eventually came in 94. Yeah. After I was, Boy Blue had. He was not confirmed. Mm -hmm. Then uh, the president took me for a round of golf to convince me. Because I'm the one, I'm the one actually that brought Boy Blue into the. Mm -hmm. but. When it, and, and then said, oh, shouldn't allow him, because he, from the start, he wanted me to be it. Mm -hmm. And then those things didn't happen, and I still resisted, and I said, hey, you got a, you have a fellow there, Undersecretary Leung, why don't you try him first? And I kept oh, trying, oh, yeah. I kept trying to escape being cabinet, but eventually, <laughs> uh, I had, it got to a point where uh, I, I couldn't say no anymore. He was very persuasive. Yes, and uh, I felt oxygen. <laughs> but uh, if, there, if there's one thing I can say in a nutshell, it was leadership by example. That is what motivated the rest of us. Mm -hmm. Nobody could claim to work harder. Mm -hmm. um, and it was so apparent that, um, that, that, that you had to work just as hard, you had to be just as focused, mm -hmm. you had to understand what, what, what uh, he was driving at and where, where he, he was trying to bring the country. Mm -hmm. And there was never a time when we were asked or even hinted at doing anything just for the purpose of a photo op. Uh, he, he, it, it, that, it, it wasn't. It wasn't that way. It was always. Uh, it, it was always a uh, purposeful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, I. Th I think the the reason he, he. He wasn't an easy boss. Oh yeah. He would call up at five a.m. having read all the newspapers, you know. 
but he wasn't the mean boss either. And the reason he was uh, effective mm -hmm. is that leadership by example. Nobody could claim to work harder. So if you wanted to be effective, you better work uh, at least <laughs> as hard as him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Or else, parang, you, you'll, you'll be behind. Mm -hmm. He's mm -hmm. always ahead of you. Mm -hmm. um, and um, but he also had his uh, interesting ways of getting people to arrive at a consensus that was somewhat draconian. Mm -hmm. If uh, th if cabinet members could not agree on a certain policy, okay. he would call this us together. Mm -hmm to the palace, mm -hmm. and there's a little room there where he tells you sit here, and then he'd start the discussion, and uh, then leave and said, I'll be back by the time I hope you have all agreed on something. Mm -hmm. We couldn't escape. We, <laughs> we had to sit there and, mm -hmm. and start threshing, uh, threshing things out. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I guess it was his belief that uh, it is in direct communication that that uh, that people mm -hmm. would be more effective than if they were sitting in, in their individual offices, mm -hmm. sending in memos to each other or mm -hmm. telling different things to the press and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. He'd uh, he'd put us together. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's this the room? The other thing is he was um, the the Ilocano side of him was yeah. such that. Uh, he would even be annoyed if the merienda during cabinet meetings was uh, a little too lavish, meaning there's a sandwich. Mm -hmm. So uh, <laughs> it got to a point where some of us would surreptitiously bring little snacks so, <laughs> so, so that we don't starve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Was this the room without the air con? But you know, <laughs> it is all part of leadership by example, mm -hmm. uh, none of us had flashy cars, mm -hmm. you know, because that, that, that wasn't the in thing. Mm -hmm. um, or even, even though he never said anything about n not having Wang Wangs, none of us had Wang Wangs, mm -hmm. because he didn't. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. the, 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 and the rest of us mm -hmm. just had to look the part and and act the part mm -hmm. of dedicated public servants. Mm -hmm. The impact on that was he was able to get a traditionally monolithic structure like the bureaucracy to move. Yeah. Wasn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. As I said, there's the lead dock, there are those, mm -hmm. then there's the cabinet. Mm -hmm. he, he knew how to. Well, he's a, a leader's leader. Yeah. And of course, leadership by example. Mm -hmm. Term ended 98. You went back to private? To the yes, private uh, after 98 I had my hiatus of a year because that's the law. Mm -hmm. And then I ended up in AIM. Mm -hmm. How have you stayed connected? Oh, you're, you're, oh yeah, you're, you're well he, he you're, founded this yeah. uh, foundation and, and which he calls RP Dev. I ended up to be one of the trustees. Mm -hmm. And now I'm the chairman of the executive committee. So, oh. we've, and we've always been kind of close since mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. he, I'm, he, I'm always at gatherings that, and mm -hmm. and he sends little notes, and then we see each other in mm -hmm. the, in, in various gatherings. What's the dis what are the discussions like when? <laughs> well, uh, some of it, of course, meet. <laughs> some of some of them are nostalgic. But now we have an, an, we have had a number of discussions as to how we can give a more permanent, enduring, uh, continuing assistance to the veteran no, community. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, as I said, it's one of his passions. Mm -hmm. That's why he likes to show that he's a veteran. It's very close to his heart. Mm -hmm. And as fate would have it, because I, I didn't plan on this, mm -hmm. I ended up <coughs> uh, chairing the oh. Philippine veterans, and uh, so that's another mm -hmm. avenue mm -hmm. by mm -hmm. which we have continued to be rather close. It's developed into a friendship. 
Oh, definitely, definitely. But I always, I always refer to him as my once and ever boss. No, no other president no. except him. No. <laughs> okay. Is there some special memory you have of him? An FBR moment. <laughs> Well, there are a you number. You have to hold off your game. <laughs> there are a number of interesting moments. One of the funnier ones, I guess, was when I was, we were at the Peace Philippine Chamber of Commerce, mm -hmm. and he was being given a um, medal, and I was the one to pin it, and I dropped the thing, you know. <laughs> uh -oh. okay. And uh, people were laughing and mm -hmm. stuff like that. But uh, he he makes a joke of it as well, you know. Mm -hmm. he, he, if it's a light moment, mm -hmm. he goes along with the mm -hmm. uh, with the lightness of the moment. Mm -hmm. Then the other things I remember is that he was not adept at getting out of a sand trap, okay, in golf. <laughs> so okay. those of us who would play golf with him, cabinet, would would use. Uh, his 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 golf game for that day as a barometer mm -hmm. for his mood for for the rest of the day. <laughs> so, if he gets into a sand trap and uh, <laughs> struggles to get out of it, then we're kind of glancing at each other and thinking this. We'd better have good answers to questions <laughs> <laughs> this morning. <laughs> It's going to um, be a bad day. <laughs> because uh, he may not be in the best of moods. Mm -hmm. But, but uh, he, gets, he, he gets over it very quickly. Mm -hmm. it's, it's just yeah, tell a, me uh, about the temper. I mean, he, he, yeah, he, he did he, have, he, no? he did have quite a course, uh, he, temper. He, he, he did have a temper, but it was not a, what should I say, a capricious, unreasonable, mm -hmm. I'm the boss type of temper. It was usually because of a clear piece of negligence, mm -hmm. incompetence, mm -hmm. that was of uh, a uh, degree of importance mm -hmm. that would make uh, the slippage kind of inexcusable. Mm -hmm. So it, it was not a capricious type of, uh, mm -hmm. of anger just because uh, you had a bad day. So I really have very few memories of him yelling at the top of his voice at anybody. Mm -hmm. I do have memories of him dressing down people, mm -hmm. but uh, it, 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 it was it was it had a it had reason, mm -hmm. and uh, probably uh, it was a good time to to make the lesson memorable. <laughs> People also mentioned uh, in a number of the other interviews that the state of the tobacco of the cigar oh, was, that was, also, part was also an indicator of yeah, <laughs> if, temper and mood. <laughs> if he chews it a little more quickly, then uh, that's another barometer. <laughs> but it, but he, he, he made it a trademark. Mm -hmm. He doesn't like it. Yeah. And then eventually he made it a trademark for export products. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Philippine tobacco. Looking back at the six years, uh, what was the single most significant legacy made there of those of those six years? By him? Mm -hmm. I uh, the, the one. The, the ones I, I think, uh, from a government standpoint, it would have been the two things that I mentioned, the introduction of the private sector as a key engine of economic growth, and secondly, the realization of the Philippines as an integral part mm -hmm. of what should be a growing and globally significant ASEAN mm -hmm. community. Mm -hmm. Those are the ones I remember. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> As civil servant. Because that reflects two things. Mm -hmm. One, his position as a um, 
one of the great presidents of our history for you know, leading the country, but the other one reflects his position as a recognized great leader of the world, which is why I, I, you shouldn't find it surprising, and nobody should find it surprising, that there has yet to be another president of the Philippines that has had the degree of acceptance and respect in the international community up to now. Mm -hmm. I don't think anybody else has ever yet been invited to be a member of important international institutions mm -hmm. and continues to be sought for for his advice on a wide range of global matters mm -hmm. the way he is. Mm -hmm. And he didn't start with a reputation of being a global guru and he ended up that way. I'll end the interview here. Thank you very much. Okay. <laughs>